Hi folks, well, um, in our last video we uh, went over um, all our measurements of parts and what we were and weren't going to reuse and we got ourselves a, a box full of parts that came in um, and we may go, uh, may rifle through that a little bit tonight, uh, I'm not for certain on that. Uh, we are still waiting on our valves and lifters. Uh, which will be here in two days time um, uh, for final assembly um, our video tonight is about uh, uh, decking the heads in uh, the top the top of the block uh, top of the block um, because uh, the block wasn't bad but the cylinder heads were certainly warped as hot as they had gotten and uh, um, uh, and uh, thus causing uh, the uh, blowing of the head gaskets. Uh, so uh, we're going to work on them uh, and let y'all see how uh, we did it uh, with uh, <laughs> the minimal use of resources possible uh, while still doing, I think, a, a pretty fair job. Uh, so stick with us and uh, we'll get to work. All right, welcome here, viewers, to uh, to our milling station in the shop. Uh, uh, it's a whirlpool produ uh, produced right around the turn of the century. It features a direct drive uh, transmission that uh, is uh, currently incorrectly assembled and makes a clunk that isn't right. Uh, but right now, uh, we've uh, uh, enabled the... Uh, manual milling machine feature uh, uh, featuring a, a piece of scrap marble um, borrowed from the law office. Um, clients give you the weirdest stuff. Uh, we actually prefer cash, um, check, money order, fine firearms, uh, but um, you know, sometimes you just get random stuff and well is being repurposed here, at least for the time being. So, but what we're going to do here is, uh, the beauty of this marble is it is completely flat. So, we're going, uh, we've taped a piece of 220 grit wet dry sandpaper here, uh, and uh, we're going to mill these heads flat because finding a good machine shop uh, that will take on this small of a job is tough and why not save the money it's just a lawnmower engine so but we're going to use our sharpie brand machinist die uh, to mark the surface to see see where we are and aren't cutting Whirlpool's a fine brand. We also had Kim Moore and owned Maytag for a while. Quite a while. 1982 through 2012. That's when your washing machine should come from. It should have zero lights on the front of it. Just a dial. That's your push and pull. Your trusty old friend. They're still out there, folks. Yeah. You can find them at these used appliance stores in Boise. And they're still nice. If you want to pay the guy extra, be extra safe. You can pay him extra, and I'm sure they'll take it all the way down for you and either put a new tub or clean it manually, spick and span. Uh, give them a shout they, do they hold as much as one of these new things no they ain't going to quit after three years either we run one 20 years and already he is an old change I ain't a neutral frame quick kid which is 30 bucks I just got a little, little bit overboard Okay, so we've got our head all marked up with machinist die, sharpie, whatever. I'm curious. Um, 
Oh. I'm pause the video for a moment. All right, continuing on from about to commence our milling operation. We're shooting from the hip here. We've uh, chosen a uh, 220 grit. Uh, why 220 grit? Because that is the uh, <clears throat> the lowest grit that uh, Harbor Freight had in wet dry. So uh, on this milling machine is. Uh, it's milling lubricant, uh, it, it's manual feed, um, but we have a nice setup here to feed uh, lubricant uh, for the wet sanding operation. Uh, and uh, we're just going to take a leap of faith and set it down here and see what happens. I always kind of like to figure out, but I've never done this on a head. Um, I think so to go back and forth. Uh, last time I've done this was on the computer micro processor quite some time ago. Like when I actually got so hot. I'm happy the processor to make a difference. Okay. We're going pretty good here. Let's see where we're at. Oh, yes, we certainly were warped. Let me see. Our machine coming off. Our die, our Sharpie's off here. But boy, boy, was she warped. So let's keep on trucking. And we're about there. And we're up here, and you look and see, there's just but a little bit of dye, our, our jazz we put in there. We have to do a little bit, take a little bit more off there, but I think this may turn out nice. We shall see. And it may not have to go up any much more in grit. This is a 220. I've got a 400 and a 600, but I don't, and they don't need a polish like a Buick. Yeah, it's freshen up our legs here. Most of it, that's the thing with these manual feed systems. They can be unreliable and subject to well oil strength. Quite frankly, what we call might call a user error, uh, but here, here we are now. Boy, it was really opened up on this side. I can't help but wonder. Yeah, it looks like there is there's a bit blown right there as well. There's a little pathway. So let's keep on trucking. We got a fresh. Oh yeah, new fresh cutting. So that cleaned off. I'm going to have to get our uh, milling wound dispenser on the side of the house and get some more because I'm still going to love the place. So I'm using uh, dihydrogen uh, monoxide. Very good stuff, this type of thing. You know what you're thinking of? No, no clue. Uh, how much is it going to increase compression? No idea. Make a jabore amount, I suppose. Maybe we'll run 89 in it. Let's see. Let's see what she looks like. Oh, we're getting there, but yeah, right there's our, our problem, child. Boy. You know what? Let me work from the other side. Let's see if that has anything to do with it. I'm sure we're milling flat. But, you know, all the, most of our marks are coming out. We can live with that. Our ring is complete. Yeah, we still got a burn mark on the edge of that. That has got to come off. So, 
way. I guess we'll turn it around this way. How warped that is. Yeah. The stone is about head here. Ain't no rinsing that out. Oh, things jumped around there. Yeah. We've got ourselves a fresh honing stone. It's put itself into place and we're gonna take try and take out this flatten all this out and see if we can get this one spot this low spot uh, cleared up and we shall see what happens see where we're at oh buddy we're actually finally almost there and I'll say that that surface is almost darn close to looking machined can you believe that hmm the tire on the front left caster wheel. I was actually changing the tire, putting a new tire on the rim. And that's when I tore that bicep. And that's what a nice guy I am. She does that to me and I still come back and give her give her my all for the best best farm re rebuild I can do. Uh, especially considering I'm not from the farm. Keep on going, guys. Mill this sucker flat. <laughs> scratches there and I hope that'll cause me to blow a head gasket. I don't believe it will. I don't take it off enough to take those two out. So that certainly turned out nice. We found like we got the five lead. Let's see. What's left? Oh she says we're not done yet. Big boy. You take me all the way down right there. And you know, we've got a little bit right there. Yeah. Mm. Now what much light I saw just putting a straight edge over top of it. I'm not the least bit surprised. Uh, won't be surprised if we run out of memory on this camera. Either. 
I'm going to videotape both heads, so I would do it in batches, but let's go ahead and uh, grab a finer grit and put a final pot. not perfect uh, neither is all the other parts of this motor uh, but maybe after a little bit more polish I'll repair it to send it after we lap some new valves in and get those combustion chambers completely cleaned out yeah I think she's this one's uh, I think we'd get another thousand hours out of her. We shall see. All right, folks, here we're, we're looking uh, at, the, at the left hand cylinder head. Now uh, we just uh, just worked on the right hand one, which, if you remember, uh, right, uh, it was blown right here. And you can see the still see the flame cutting on the cooling fin there. This one was blown somewhere in high inside, and we suspect at the time I said we suspect uh, that that is blown and that gaskets venting uh, combustion gas in the crankcase, which may still yet be the case. We're fixing to find out, but. I don't know, just looking at it, I mean, I see it's probably a low spot here, but maybe not. That's just some gasket stuck on. Uh, we'll find out here in a minute. I am curious to see. Uh, there's a, I mean, what I saw when I saw it, I think the breakdown of the gasket was here. Which actually, this leads to outside air. And it's just a hole through the head. I can see my finger in there, but yeah, it's just a hole through the head. This this is our lifter bore. I didn't see anything open to the lifter bore. So, I mean, our combustion gases may have been purely just rings and these ones blowing oil water. Uh, well, hey, there's uh, a head gasket here or there. I mean, these ones blowing oil have all just got a that top compression ring broken and folks I, I guess nobody uh, working on it on YouTube has gone through and followed through and made the full video on it or not torn them down but I guess we're going to find out so let's mark up mark up with our machinist die here uh, and we will get to milling Blow in the middle. 
How about that? I don't see that. Hmm. That's just... It is nowhere near as warped. Got nowhere near as hot as the other side. Nowhere near. But we are not going to have to sand and sand and sand on this thing to make it flat. Wow. Hmm. Hope that head survives. We're certainly going to have to stake that uh, valve guide in. Um, we're back today, actually. I bet we're probably, probably already flat. They are a little bit more off, at the very least, just to, just so it'll match the, the other cylinder, or the other head. Let's see, where are we at, where are we at, where are we at? Ho, 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 there it is, looky there. It tells a story. Is what's the, What story is it telling us? Story indeed. That bald hole doesn't appear to go anywhere. But it does. Look at there. Right there. Hmm. So I'm not mistaken, that is not a primary cylinder head bolt. No, sir, it's not. No, sir, it's not at all. There's there's five of them. One, two, three, four, and the long number five right there. I do believe. Yeah, they're right there. Well, Ain't that a fun howdy do? Our blown gasket. Wow. Didn't see that. Didn't see that coming, guys. Didn't see it coming at all. So what is bolting into this? There's no threads. This hole has no purpose. We're going to see if it has it. No, the gasket doesn't even, neither, neither, I don't know if both gaskets are the same, but neither gasket has a provision for that hole. And, that hole, right there, which has no purpose whatsoever that I can see. I mean, it it runs into where this stud goes in for, uh, for the exhaust, but it does go all the way through. You see. Yeah, right there. Comes through. On this side. Right there. It's a vent. Yeah. A little vent hole that's covered by a gasket. Isn't that odd? Strange, oh, strange, oh. Yeah, that's what I'm figuring out to do. But for, but for whatever reason, that hole, yeah, it's, it's open on this side. And open into here, but it's not, 
but if nothing's worked with AMPA, the gasket lies in the way. And what had happened is our gasket flew here, and made it through here to, and see this, this bolt hole here, where does it, And she comes up and looks like, I don't know if it's truly blind or not. I, no, yeah, it has a blind end. With this, I'll be dang if this fellow right here doesn't, he's right up the combustion chamber for no reason whatsoever, considering there's a gasket in the way. Another, our other head has the same hole. It's not that we have improper gaskets. And for whatever it may not have holes there for uh, a different model that these heads share with, but um, regardless, there's one source uh, of our blow by. We, we had a blown gasket here going to this this hole here and it came through and vented in under the valve cover producing excess crank pressure. But let's keep machining and get her flat and uh, probably call her night. So, This one is not flat either. Not flat in the least little bit. Look at that spot. has not even. Yeah. yeah. It has not been touched yet. Well, we're here. Let's get it done right. I'm gonna start for this first. Let's see what the hell. Wash it out. We're getting there, folks. Little rinse. Flavor cup area a little bit. There we go. Let's knock her out and get her flat. Thank you. 
I'm gonna cover it some porosities in the head. Yeah, but it should seal fine. It should be flat now. So, I say, uh, All shot tail, but seems to be all right for the price. Mm, yeah, I'm about ready to call that flat. A little bit here. Let's see if I can wipe it off. all that surface half a heartbeat uh, we'll, we'll hit them both with 600 grit clean them up now polish them but with uh, most of the grooves and uh... okay so we got our cylinder heads here and uh, they turned out pretty good uh, we did end up going to the 600 grit and uh, looks like I think gave us a pretty nice finish that uh, not super shiny, um, but it's certainly flat uh, without any shadow of, the, shadow of a doubt. And upon further thought, this this hole right here that where the gasket blew into was probably for is is used as an oil drain back hole on a horizontal engine application because on a horizontal application the head would be sitting like this and this would be the oil's route back from uh, to the crankcase from the head so but it's obviously not necessary on the horizontal shaft motor uh, thus it's been blocked off by the gasket uh, so you no reason to mess with it uh, we've got them flat again uh, we're going to remove the problem that caused them to overheat in the first place uh, We've obviously got our combustion chambers cleaned up as best as we can uh, uh, without doing any more, any damage to them. Um, so, uh, and the valve, valve seats actually look uh, incredibly good. Uh, there's, I would see no cause for a valve job or anything like that. Our new valves will lap in there nicely. Uh, I have no doubt we'll have a nice pretty pattern. Uh, as we can see here also, uh, uh, we've got our block decks cleaned up. They're nice and flat. Uh, uh, our method for doing so yeah i'm not really gonna talk about um well uh, i'll confess yeah uh, uh process for decking the top was uh, uh, uh a piece of uh scrap laminate flooring uh which uh well seemed flat enough for uh, uh for lawnmower work and uh, no, it's not a machine shop, and uh, if you got a problem with it, do it. You do it a different way. Congratulations and enjoy yourself. You do it your way. You make your own video about it. Put it up. I'll watch it and give you a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. How about that? Uh, but uh, so we got our decks real nice here and pretty, uh, and. Uh, 
coming up on our next video. Uh, we'll be discussing our new parts and uh, maybe doing some assembly and uh, or I may do a sub video just on honing these cylinders with this flex hone. Uh, it's called a ball hone or is the generic name for it but uh, it's supposed to make uh, honing um, for just re-ringing purposes uh, a little bit more consistent uh, and uh, idiot proof mm -hmm. is uh, probably the best word for it uh, so we've got that coming up see you soon